Imagine my disappointment when I found out that True Detective had got bumped up due to the Super Bowl. Just imagine it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're here to talk a little bit about Episode 5 of True Detective. I'm in it to win it. I'm going all the way through. Going to finish this one. And boy, have we got an episode to talk about. I am the man you may know as A from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And if you have not seen my previous reviews of this, shame on you. <laughs> but I get a lot. There's a lot of commentary, a lot of discussion. And I will start with... It's okay if you like this, and it's okay if I don't like it. We can all get along. What I'm here to discuss is the positives, which so far there are very few of, and mostly the negatives and inconsistency in writing and all that other stuff and how they really should have just made it its own series. And I will show you that the rest of everybody else is starting to catch on to the fraud that is True Detective. But again, if you enjoy it, like, look, I don't care. You be, Feel free. It's fine. You can enjoy it. But let's get into the plot. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about all the ways in which they have been sorely misguided. So spoilers ahead. This episode starts with the burial of Navarro's sister, or while well, the cremation of her sister. And we're running out of suspects here. As to who could be doing what. In fact, one of the suspects we haven't even met yet. I don't even... I, I don't really understand the decision for that. So, okay. And it looks like... Uh, well, we'll get there. But Peter's life is shattered. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. How they take like the only pseudo-likable character who's been kind of tr downtrodden and... Treated like crap this whole time. He finally gets uh, recognition here. Uh, but we have Navarro, and, and this scene doesn't make a ton of sense. Like, I think it's competently shot. I get her sorrow. I understand it. I think that's all conveyed pretty well. But they put her in an urn, and then she decides, she's like, baby girl, I just, I knew you wanted to be in the water. <laughs> so she has the old lady dig a hole for her. Well, okay. Uh, sure. So instead of, you know, the physically fit, very strong female cop do it, she has the old lady dig a hole for her. Not a very deep hole, mind you, but just enough to dump her sister into it. And then she gets called by the ghosts, walks a whole five feet, and almost falls into the ocean. And the old lady has to take a lot of effort to try to save her, which none of that, that whole scene didn't, didn't work too well for me. But anyway, we move along from this, and uh, a lot of nothing happens. I guess they finally release um, Danvers' daughter, Leah, from jail. I don't care. Pete gets kicked out of his house. I don't care. You know, he gets kicked out for trying to solve a mass murder. <laughs> or, I mean, is it a crime? Again, we're going to talk about whether or not a crime has been committed. I don't care about a cold case. One murder... Okay, which is more important to you folks? Solving one murder or solving six murders? And the fact that the one murder, only one person got murdered, and that happened several years ago, and no one else has been murdered. But there's six murders going on right now, potentially six murders, and that takes precedence over everything else. You know, the, the one native girl takes precedence, even though she died several years ago over everything else. Interesting. We also uh, learn a bunch of things about Navarro. Basically, everybody in this town sucks. Danvers sucks. They all suck because they're all just flat-out terrible people. They're all killers. They're all murderers. So apparently, there was a cold, another case with a serial uh, abuser that Danvers and Navarro they decided to kill William Wheeler years ago, and they covered it up. So, and, and Pete goes, how many times did you go? You're not asking the right question. What's the right question? How how many times did you go to visit uh, the serial abuser? She's like, I don't know, three or four times. And he's like, no, ten times. So you visited this dude ten times and did nothing about it, but when he finally kills his girlfriend, then you shoot him in the head? 
And then you covered up because you guys are scumbag, evil cops. I mean, you would say the same thing. Anybody, like if they covered it up, let's say it was a black guy that got shot, it would be racism and the worst thing ever. But instead, it's no, they're, they're, they did God's work, apparently. So they're just terrible, terrible detectives, bad cops, horrible at this. It's ridiculous. Uh, so, you know, they move on. And then finally, you get the big meeting between uh, McKittrick and Ted. Co oh, there, there's a uh, there's a meeting to, to discover how. How to put an end to the to the six the six guys who were dead or five or however many it is. So McKittrick, Ted Connell called Danvers in to the silver mining offices, and they've decided that the scientists' deaths were ruled not a murder, but a tragic accident resulting from a slab avalanche. And it's funny because this person here from the ringer, they mentioned they mentioned the Dyatlov Dyatlov Pass, which is a old Russian story, I think from the 60s, where I think there were eight people who all died in uh, the snow, and they had all these strange, like, broken bones and all this other stuff, and they were mostly naked. And they died from what they think is a slab avalanche, even though most people, like, a lot of people thought it was Yeti attack or, or, like, Bigfoot murder. Like, it was the strongest evidence for people disappearing. But, yeah, it was a slab avalanche because these people were in the mountains in a pass, and they they put their their tents on a hill and the hill slid and fell and crushed them but here we've seen a million different shots of this place it's all flat surface there's no hills there's no mountains there's nothing so i mean i guess it's an interesting throwback but whatever so there's a conversation and and basically uh he also uh, ted connolly says he knows what happened he knows that danvers covered up the murder that they did earlier. You know, amazing. No one cares. And everyone's hiding in the night country, which is just a bunch of caves. It's a cave system, and the squirrely markers are left by hunters to warn people about thin ice above the caves, so don't fall into them. So who knows what's going on? Well, McKittrick's clearly involved. She's the one who runs the mining operation, and she's going to get... The uh, the guy who wants to be the head of the police, Pete's dad, whatever his name is, Hank. Hank. Right. So here's one of my problems with the show. Is that she, you know, she sets up Hank and Hank's like, well, I'm not a murderer. And his only motivation is that he wants to be the chief of police. Yet, ha yet somehow he decides to murder one person and potentially two in order to become the chief of police, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Especially when she said, like, he's a drug addict. He, he'll just get high and die. And then the other thing, so so it's just bizarre, because none of that scene makes sense, because they set up a ticking time, like a ticking clock now, where they're like, Pete, you got to clean this up. So essentially what happens is Danvers picks up the Hess guy, right, and gives him drugs. So she steals drugs from the evidence room to give it to a drug addict. And then lets him do drugs in her house. And then Hank shows up and is like, give me give me the drug addict. I need him. And she's like, no, I don't need him. Even though he's pointed out to her where the cave is and, you know, doesn't necessarily, they don't need him. They, I don't know that they need a drug addict. But he decides that he's like, I got to get out of here. And, you know, where's he going to go? It's night and it's snowing outside and you're a drug addict. Where exactly is he going? I mean, he's survived out there before, but still, it seems a little random. He actually had, like, more clothes then. Not to mention, um, so then Hank decides to kill him, and then he's going to kill Danvers, but then Pete kills Hank, his dad. And then Pete has to clean up his dad, okay? Because, you know, they have to get there right now because why? What's the rush? What's the hurry? Is Kittred, McKittridge going to get them? The the lady is going to go do something about it? Like, what's the ticking time clock? Are the caves going to go somewhere? The dude who's been hiding out in those caves is still sitting there. He ain't going anywhere. I don't understand. Like, none of this works. It just doesn't. Like, they have to get there immediately because, you know, the thing. It's not like 
that lady is still alive. She's been dead for several years. You're not looking for a living person in that cave other than the suspect. He could sit there. He's been sitting there for how long? Why do you got to rush? What's the hurry? Are you waiting for other cops to come find you? What other cops? There seem to be the only cops who are available to do anything. The three of them are the only cops left. So what, what are we talking about here? So let's look at why other people are catching on to why this is a terrible show. Look, it's, it's Forbes. And Eric Kane agrees. True Detective Night Country. Contrived and ridiculous. Yes, it is ridiculous. And what he says is there's not enough plot here for six episodes. Yes, it would have done better as a movie than a show. And it just it doesn't make a lot of sense. There's just lots of talking about n nothing ends up working for the show. And there's no one to like. Danvers' kid sucks. Leah, she's a spoiled brat who doesn't understand what she's talking about. The whole native thing, they haven't explained anything other than like, my pollution is bad. Yeah, we get it. Living near a mine is bad. If the mine leaves, though, there is no town and no one lives there. You're going to live like a bunch of uh, people out there in the wild just shooting random stuff. Like, oh, you can only live off of so many whales or whatever. I don't know. And then what else goes on here? Like, it's just the whole trope is all of it. Just it's terrible. It's boring. Nothing has see this guy says, I'm also bored to scenes of this uh like this scenes like this one. Why do we focus on this stuff? Do I need to hear Leah tell Peter about Kayla telling her about the day she fell in love with him? One episode from the end, and I'm bored to tears. Exactly. Like I said, the show is so, so people are catching on. They're they're realizing it. I mean, something happened this time. But what could possibly be going on here it, it's just like yeah he mentions the footage of the abandoned mine like they have security cameras around an abandoned mine then why don't they have security cameras at the one where they're trying to hide everything so that when navarro and danvers go there they know that they're there like what what is going on here like none of this makes yeah and we the the, the, <laughs> the killer didn't kill himself he got murdered. So they brought justice to their own hands, and somehow they're okay with that. And they just does that doesn't matter. So just saying other people are into this, people are, are looking at this and they're going, Yeah, not so sure that this is this is good. Don't don't really think I like this. Uh it's crazy. This guy, this is a huge article, and I didn't even read all of it. I still don't like the ticking time clock. I just I don't think the clock makes sense. Why did Hank go into all this? Like, his motivations are unclear. They just, he just does it because they, he shoots the guy because he should. Even though, you know, Danvers illegally took that, that, that Hess guy out of the, his place. Like, what right did she have to take him on her little illegal mining trip that she's going on? None of it works. So, Let's see what's going on. I'm going to get there to the end. Is there going to be something supernatural about it? I don't know. They completely ignored whatever happened to Navarro in the last one where they found her next to the Christmas tree with her ear blown out or whatever. They just, just don't address it. We don't care. Well, let's throw a scene in. She's following the body around for no reason. Hopefully it pays off. I don't know. Maybe Navarro's the killer. I have no idea at this point. There's only like three people left in the show, so it's got to be. Or it's the guy we've never seen and a polar bear. All of them. Whatever. Let me know what you think down below. I'm losing my mind. I paid attention closer this time, and I tried to at least, and I just I s struggle to because it is this is brutal. This is brutal. It's just baffling. No, none of the decisions make any any sense. So let me know what you think. In the meantime, catch our live stream. It's 7:30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Come join us for the party. It's a lot of good, good wholesome fun here with the fam. And, uh, yeah, join us, like, subscribe. You know what to do. We love all y'all, but I'm on to the next one.